Hello, everyone. Welcome. This is uh, Stanley British Primary School Unit 5. Thank you all for taking time out of your Saturday to be here and uh, your Sunday tomorrow, of course. The judges are very excited to hear what you have to say. I'm Mark McCall. I'm your facilitator for today, and I'll be your timekeeper as well. The judges will introduce themselves in just a moment and then ask you to introduce yourselves. Just a reminder on your timings, uh, four minutes for your prepared speech, followed by eight minutes of questions, and then the judges will provide feedback for you as well. And to help with the timing in this virtual uh, environment here so you can see the, the cues, I'm gonna do a virtual background. With one minute left, I'll switch to green. And then when you are out of time at the end of four and eight minutes, I will switch to yellow. And with that, I'm gonna mute myself and turn it over to the judges. Good afternoon. Um, in a moment, we'll tell you a bit about ourselves. Um, then we'll ask you, as you've been told, to introduce yourselves and your teacher. Um, I wanna start with saying how incredibly proud we are that you all have involved yourselves in this program, that you've done this work. We are very proud of you. We're just also incredibly impressed with your teachers, the people who have prepared you for doing this, because this is exciting for us. And, um, it, okay, see, it was pointed out to us that this is a special day for all of you, and for one of you, it's a really special day. And um, when we were asked, are you going to say anything about it? I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> so if it's anybody's birthday, I'm not wishing you a happy birthday. I don't think that'd be appropriate for me to do so. And we're not and, singing. No, oh, that definitely will not happen. <laughs> anyway, um, no, if, if it is your birthday, good way to celebrate it by talking about the Constitution. I think that's cool. My colleagues are, I didn't tell you who I was. I'm Lindsey Draper from Milwaukee County, Wisconsin, retired from the juvenile court bench here. Now, my colleagues are. I'm Candida Steele, and I'm retired as a judge on the U.S. Civilian Board of Contract Appeals. I handle federal government contract disputes around the country. And, but I spent 20 years in this program and I love it dearly. So I'm really happy to see you're all involved in it. Well, I'm not holding back. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Rebecca Tinder. I'm an attorney from, retired attorney from Charleston, West Virginia and the West Virginia We the People Coordinator. And I'm so glad that you all are here and congratulations to you and your teachers and coaches for getting you here. Could I impose on you to introduce yourselves and your teacher, please? Um, hello, my name is Donovan Agler and I'm an eighth grader at Stanley British Primary School. Hi, I am Samantha Ingleby and I'm also an eighth grader. Um, I'm Lila Hutchins and I'm a seventh grader at Stanley British Primary School. And these are our coaches, Susan Cleveland and Mike Wazalenki. Okay, oh. whose, birth whose birthday is it? <laughs> Donovan. Yeah. Were you shy? You weren't going to tell me, were you? Not particularly. We... Uh, <laughs> okay, never mind. So this is the first question out of Unit 5. When a choice must be made, it is better to allow those who preach racial hate rather than to be panicked into embarking on the dangerous course of permitting the government to decide what its citizens may say and hear. Do you agree or disagree with Judge Bernard Decker's upholding the rights of Nazis to walk in to march in Skokie, Illinois? Why? What limits has the US Supreme Court placed on freedom of expression? What benefit, if any, is there from the presentation of ideas that are designed to alarm, antagonize, and offend members of society? What limits on freedom of expression, if any, should be placed on social media sites? Begin. The framers, as in many regards, learned that freedom of speech was a fundamental right that had been infringed upon by the king. Freedom of speech and expression is so vital that only certain narrow restrictions are placed upon this fundamental right. These restrictions are known as time, place, and manner. The Supreme Court defines these restrictions through judicial review. 
On May 1st, 1977, Frank Collins, leader of the neo-Nazis, planned to exercise their First Amendment right by marching through Skokie, Illinois. Collins had received the proper permit to march, but the mayor, Albert J. Smith, presumed that it could lead to uncontrollable violence. As a result, Smith restricted Collins and the neo-Nazis from using their First Amendment rights, right to free speech and assembly. In a 5-4 to four decision, it was concluded that the neo-Nazis had not infringed on the time, place, or manner restriction, and thus they had the constitutional right to march. We agree that no one's First Amendment right should be violated, no matter their personal ideals. When someone invokes their First Amendment right to freedom of expression, they must not intimidate, incite violence, or abridge others' ability to exercise their free speech rights under the Constitution. In Virginia v. Black, the court decided while it's constitutional for Virginia to criminalize cross-burning with intent to intimidate, it was unconstitutional to assume the intent requirement was met in the action of all cross-burnings. This landmark case clarified the standards from limit on freedom of expression. The benefits of ideas that are made to alarm, offend, or antagonize are many. These ideas can cause alarm, which can lead to change. While we don't believe that change should always be made as a result of panic, we do believe occasionally it is necessary. Hate speech is protected under the First Amendment as the courts believe all speech is necessary for a balanced society. For example, the Supreme Court case Cohen versus California ruled that the offensive speech was protected under the First Amendment. A well-known example of the tension between freedom of expression and censorship of opposing ideas regarding Peter Sotonovich and Colin Kaepernick. There were calls and campaigns for them to be expelled for their opinions. Depending on your perspective, both of these individuals could be candidates to have their speech limited in a country without our permissive First Amendment rights. But if we start to draw limitations on ideas and those who have the power to limit our speech become corrupt, it would cause a slippery slope and jeopardize our rights as citizens. Social media platforms create a whole new venue for freedom of expression that was obviously not considered by the founding fathers when writing the Constitution. We believe there should be some limits on social media revolving around true threats and hate speech. However, determining what true threats and hate speech are has to, has to this point proven difficult. Does North Carolina law prohibiting registered sex offenders from accessing various websites where minors are known to be active and have accounts, regardless of whether or not the sex offender directly interacted with a minor, violate the First Amendment? This was the question posed by the Supreme Court in a 2017 ruling in Packingham versus North Carolina, and the court ruled unanimously that the law did violate his First Amendment rights. In LNS v. United States 2015, LNS threatened many people over social media. In an 8-1 decision, the Supreme Court found that Ellenus needed evidence that he intended to make threats, and so his First Amendment rights were upheld. Justice Thomas wrote the dissent and stated that nine of the 11 Circuit Courts of Appeals had already addressed this issue and resolved it with a general intent standard. The majority opinion not only overturns their rulings, but also leaves the courts uncertain as to whether an intent to threaten is required or whether recklessness will suffice. Ultimately, social media platforms are a private entity, and as such, the government cannot regulate them in the same way they can other mediums and messages. Social media user agreements vary on different websites, but restrict you from doing certain things on social media. You can get kicked off if you do these things. There are algorithms on some social media networks to limit hate speech, and you can report someone for harassment, abuse, or an offensive image or comments. Freedom of speech is one of the foundational principles of our government. It must be protected now and continue to be protected in the future. We are now open for questions. All right, thank you. Uh, let me just ask you a question, because given that the decision in the Skokie case was really close and that there were some very serious concerns, has the change in our country, where we are a much more polarized nation with a whole lot more emphasis on people having guns, made it more, made it a good idea to perhaps review that decision so that we do limit where we let people march with certain kinds of ideas? Has there been a change in the country that said we should do that differently? I believe that in Skokie v. Illinois, um, that all, all of the regulations with freedom of expression and freedom of speech should be under time, place, and manner. So with place, it's where you're marching. If you're marching uh, against a certain group and a predominantly where that group is present, then I believe that falls under place. And if manner, if you're really loud and yelling threatens in that place where those people are predominantly present, then that goes against manner. And so I believe it should hold up to the three-pronged test of time, place, and manner. So you're comfortable that the exact same rules should be applied. And if I were to say the Proud Boys should not march through the inner city or Black Lives Matter, 
protesters should not march through certain suburbs, the same rules should be applied and whether or not they got a permit should control. I believe that the same rule should be applied on a very basic level. It always depends on what the what they are doing, what their message is, and if that message is hurtful to other people and can cause a lot of harm, there should be different limits on what they should be able to say. Um, adding on to my panel mate, um, it depends on the message they are trying to get across, but it also depends on how they are doing that, if they're being violent or if they're marching peacefully. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Could you tell me um, what, what limits there should be or are um, to students' free expression and if that has anything to do with the age of the students, for example? I believe that it should have nothing to do with the age. I believe the time, place, and manner should hold up to both. We have high school students that are marching down for their protests and having walkouts. And if they're not causing harm to any of the other students or any of the people in the surrounding areas, I believe that if that doesn't violate the time, place, or manner, that the high school students would have to hold up to the three-pronged test that the adults would have to hold up to. Um, another opinion could be that there should be limits placed on students if they are not 18 yet because then they would not legally be adults and they might have to get permission from a adult to march or protest at school or after school. You indicated in your prepared remarks that um, hate speech is necessary. Um, is, should false speech, um, information that is known to be false, be protected by the First Amendment? Why or why not? Um, no, I do not think that it should be um, protected because it's fake news that you're spreading. And when you spread fake news, people can start um, believing it and then spreading it. And um, it can just, it can cause disaster or like a riot or something. And on to my panel mate, I believe if the fake news you're spreading is not harming other people, for example, um, like anti-masking protests, since that is still, if you're holding up to the time, place and manner, if you're not, if someone is not getting hurt by the way you're protesting, if you're protesting in a certain way that directly hurts other people or might even indirectly hurt a large group of people, then that is against what we're saying. Another opinion of that might be it is the people's choice whether to believe the false news or not and if the person chooses to believe it that is not that is their fault and it would not affect other people so how are we going to discern um where to draw that line if it's harming somebody or not harming somebody or they're believing it or not believing it and who decides for example with the anti-vaxxers that you said should have a right to march because they're not harming anybody. What if you think they are harming people by being an anti-vaxxer? Who gets to decide? I believe that who gets to decide is a general consensus of a lot of people. At the moment, it is not a singular person who can decide this is exactly how it should be and this is exactly how it is. It is a general consensus of a lot of people right now in the world and whether or not it should be that way is up to your interpretation, but I believe that's how it is right now. I'd answer my, onto my panel mate. Currently, we're only focusing in the current world, we're only focusing on the certain protests, and that's why the time, place, and manner is held up to the three punk test. If the protest violates that, they're not really caring if the protest with their message is violating, if, if the message is harming other people, for example, with the anti mask riots. I believe that they're only talking about with the time, place, and manner if like if it violates the time, like if the time of day, if it's at night and the place, if it's a predominantly, like you said, against a group or the manner, if they're like really loud, I believe that we're, I mean, that is talking about only the specific protests and not the message that they're sending. I want to be sure that I'm clear on, because I, I, I really have been listening at time, place and manner and uh, being come up, coming up in the answers where um, I want to hone in on is your fake news should not be spread position. And where I'm struggling is using the vaccination and anti-vaxxer piece. If, as long as folks aren't beating folks up in the street, I get that's not, that's it. 
But if the information is that there is no danger in COVID-19 and therefore don't go out and protect or don't wear a mask, is putting other citizens at risk, including people who do take it seriously, is that a message that ought to be regulated somehow? I believe that the three-pronged test was posed by the government at the time, place, and manner. And I believe that the Center for Disease Control should also be on top of that. So if the Center for the CDC believes that that, is, that that information is harming other people, then they can go in and take that protest away. But if the CDC believes that their information is not directly harming other people, then they, I believe that they can protest if they're not violating the time, place, or manner. So you believe that there is a governmental entity that ought to be able to make a call as to whether what you're advancing is true, you need to stop it. Is, is, did I get you correct in that answer? Well, it doesn't necessarily have to be true. It could be false, but as long as it's not harming other people, then that's where you draw the line. If it's harming other people or affecting other people in a negative connotation, then yeah. And there should be an entity that decides that. I believe that if it was done on social media, social media has its own rights to do that. It is not funded by the government. I don't think that the government should be able to step in and always prevent free speech if it does not agree with their, agree with their specific platform. But as a private entity, most social medias can say that this information may be false, go here for more information or things like that. Okay. Wow. Okay. Um, I, the struggle that we were having uh, is probably indicative of how difficult this issue is. Um, I appreciated, uh, well, you, you certainly made sure I understood the time, place, and manner uh, test um, that I appreciated the inclusion of additional cases relating to the cross burning to Virginia versus Black the, um, and the incitement to uncontrollable violence reference. I, I appreciate it. I liked the way that you dealt with the algorithms that can be entered into social media determinations of what should be um, allowed. Uh, I appreciated your presentation. Thank you. I thought that was a lovely job. Thank you. Um, and we certainly, time, place, and manner is a good good starting point, and, and thank you for explaining it so well. Um, the cross burning was uh, a good point to make, too. Um, goes along with the opposite of flag burning, perhaps. Um, I hope you all have had a really good time here and, and enjoyed getting to know all of this information uh, because it certainly will stand you and the rest of us in good stead in the, in the rest of your life when you go vote all the time and you read the papers and you know what's going on. Um, I hope you'll use that experience to educate the people around you and your family members, but I also hope you think about um, using that experience to represent the rest of us in state, local, or federal government positions or as lawyers and judges. Uh, we very much need people in governmental positions who know what um, the government is supposed to be doing and how to do it. And you've got a, a way head start and shown that you know more than most of my law school classmates knew. So thank you so much. It was a wonderful job. Well done and congratulations again. Um, I particularly liked your four minute prepared um, statement where you um, <coughs> gave us cases, but you explained what they were and why they were relevant um, when you went through. You also um, gave us some uh, more recent examples uh, in society where that hadn't necessarily turned into court cases that were uh, indicative of your understanding of this topic. Um, and um, I particularly liked in the question and answer where you gave your opinion, but uh, another colleague would say, but another opinion would be this. 
and you were able to explain that. So it's always good to know and understand more than one side of an argument. It shows that you've given it consideration um, and haven't just um, dismissed it once you came up with an opinion, you just stuck to it, but you actually look to see what all the other opinions might be. And that uh, shows great understanding. And I commend you for that. Well done. Thank you, team. And Mr. Weslenke and Ms. Ms. Cleveland, thank you for your hard work. We really appreciate it. And good luck, team. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hey,